What is happening all you Dolphins fans out there? So today, day three of the NFL draft, got underway, and yet again the Dolphins have added great players to this team to round out the draft class. So uh, just going to be giving you my opinions on the day three picks and how I think they'll fit with the team moving forward. So to start day three of the draft, the Dolphins did exactly what I thought they would and honestly what they should have done. They traded their two late fourth rounders to move up on day three and select a solid talent early in round four. And with that pick at 111 overall, the Dolphins drafted the mammoth guard Solomon Kinley out of Georgia. 6'3", 337 pounds. Kinley is another move to shore up the trenches and just build an absolute bully on the offensive line. When they traded those two fourth rounders to get up to 111 overall, I really thought they were going to take a tight end or possibly an edge rusher, but Chris Greer and co. didn't hesitate at all to add yet another talented offensive lineman to shore up the unit. Solomon Kinley has experience at both guard spots in his time at Georgia. He's got experience at left guard and right guard. He's an absolute bulldozer of a guard with surprising mobility and the quickness to match. Despite being close to 340 pounds, he's got super nimble feet and hips. Uh, with the selection of Kinley, I think it's pretty obvious by now what kind of an offensive line the Dolphins envision on game day, on Sundays, you know, Thursdays and Mondays. They want big physical mauling guys that can win at the point of attack consistently. The Dolphins are probably going to be running a man-based power scheme that relies on the hog mollies up front to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups and just dominate defenders up front consistently. Kinley really is at his best when he can use his giant frame to dominate in the run game, but at the same time, he's no slouch at all when it comes to protecting the quarterback. He's had 901 career pass blocking snaps in his career at Georgia while only allowing four sacks over that time, so that's just... A testament to what kind of blocker he is. He can dominate in the run game, but also he can protect the quarterback consistently. Dolphins fans, we got ourselves a big, powerful, well-rounded lineman that won't struggle at all in any phase of the game. The selection was really was another surprising pick by the Dolphins, but I can see the logic behind the move. The team's bringing in yet another powerful and big lineman to dominate up front and provide just some solid depth on the offensive line. He's a big upgrade over guys like Shaq Lawson and Danny Isidora that the Dolphins trotted out in 2019. I mean, those guys had their moments of being, you know, solid guards, but man, they're nowhere near the level of Kinley, and we've definitely elevated the talent of the offensive line with the selection of Kinley here uh, in the fourth round. He's probably going to be competing for the right guard spot along with Robert Hunt and Jesse Davis, and it really isn't a big deal at all if he cracks the lineup, the starting lineup or not. He's going to provide solid depth to that offensive line. If he's good enough to start, so be it. He'll start. But if he needs more development, you know, more time to learn the offense, to learn the schemes, to learn, you know, just the play style of the offensive line and just how to operate at an NFL level, I'm really not uh, fussed if he's a backup or if he's starting. I really think he's got a chance to be a pretty solid guard uh, in the league if, if it all comes together for him because... He's got the athleticism, he's got the smarts, he's got all the physical ability in the world, so hopefully he can put it all together and be a dominating force for us on the inside of this offensive line that's looking like it's going to be tremendous in 2020. The second pick on day three, pick 153, ended up getting traded to the San Francisco 49ers for Matt Breida, the super speedy running back that has been pretty efficient for uh, that Kyle Shanahan offense the past uh, couple of years. Last year, he only rushed the ball 153 times for 814 yards, and that's 5.1 yards per carry. His speed is just immense. The way he can just flip the field and make defenders miss is just off the charts. I'm pretty sure, I mean, he didn't get an invite to the combine. He had like a regional combine or something like that, but he had like 438 speed or something like that. So we're getting an absolute burner here, and that speed just really shows up uh, on the field. I mean, after we failed to get and running back in day two, this trade is exactly what we needed. Matt Breida is going to come in and be a tremendous complement to Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard's going to be the hammer, the power back, and Matt Breida is going to be the do-it-all speedy back that does a pretty good job catching the ball at the backfield as well. And I just cannot wait to see what he's going to do in this offense because his speed is just off the charts, man. He's the quickest running back we've had in a very long time, and I think he's going to add a tremendous amount of juice to that side of the ball. Uh, Matt Breida. I'm super pumped that he's with the Dolphins. Honestly, I, I wanted us to pick him up in free agency, but the 49ers decided to pick up his tender, and obviously we couldn't sign him in free agency, but this isn't a huge price to pray for. Uh, it's kind of running back that's just got tremendous game-breaking speed, and man, I just cannot wait to see him tear it up for this offense. Matt Breeder, I'm a huge fan. Undrafted, now on the Dolphins, just cannot wait to see 
how his career is going to pr- progress with the Finns. Hopefully, he can be a dynamic force for this offense, man. Cannot wait. So, with the Dolphins, actual official second pick in the fifth round, the Dolphins went ahead and selected Jason Strobridge, the versatile defensive lineman out of North Carolina, 159th overall. He's 6'4", 275 pounds, and he, per- and he fits perfectly with what the team is want from their defensive lineman. He's long with heavy hands and just brings tremendous versatility to the line. He's going to line up all along that defensive line, defensive end, all the way through to defensive tackle. I mean, he's probably not going to be playing nose tackle, but he's exactly what we want from our D lineman. He's going to bring solid depth to the defensive line room, and, and the selection just really sheds light on why the Dolphins decided to move on from Jonathan Ledbetter and Gerald Willis. Uh, it really was a head-scratching move because I thought that um, you know Jonathan Ledbetter really had a lot of potential to you know, thrive in this defense. He was another heavy-handed dude, 6'4", 280 pounds, and he had inside-outside versatility, but they decided to move on because obviously they knew they were going to be able to pick up a guy like Strobridge on day three of the draft. He's got four years of experience at North Carolina. He's played from from 2015 all the way through to 2019. He's just a seasoned defender. They've seen it all in the ACC. He's gone up against dominating programs like Clemson for four years now, so obviously... He's seen a lot uh, from offenses. It's just another solid pick by Greer and Co. Strobridge is just going to fit perfectly into the defensive scheme. I just really can't wait to see how he's going to perform in training camp and the preseason. Let's see, you know, what kind of a talent he can be on this defensive line. You know, where he's going to line up. I'm sure he's going to line up all over because he's just got the kind of body composition and just ability to line up all along the line, and he's going to be a tremendous versatile piece. For this defense, hopefully he can be, you know, a better version of Jonathan Ledbetter. And, you know, you could even throw Gerald Willis in there. I mean, he's not a pure defensive tackle, but we will just have to wait and see where he's going to thrive on this defensive line. He looked really good at the senior ball, and he just really showed off that versatility. I just really loved the way he was attacking those offensive linemen in Mobile. And hopefully he can show that kind of same kind of ability with the Finns. And with the official third pick in round five, we got an amazing steal at pick 164. And that man is Curtis Weaver, the tremendous edge rusher out of Boise State, man. I think he was my favorite pick on day three, and I just got no idea why he was here. This deep in the draft, but another man's trash is another man's treasure. Man, Curtis Weaver is a huge steal. And I'm just so pumped that he was here for the team this this deep in the draft, man. He really is like a second round to third round talent, and God. I just got no idea why. I have heard word out there. The reason why he fell he fell to round five is because of his body and his weight issues, man. He does look like as I've said, he's a bit of, he's a bit of a flabby pass rusher. 265 pounds, but that didn't affect his production or his play at all this year, man. He had tw- 19 TFLs this year and 13 and a half sacks, so I don't know how he could argue how this guy isn't a tremendous edge rusher. Once he gets down to Miami in this crazy South Florida heat, I'm sure his weight is going to get right and he'll be in optimal playing shape. And I think that his perfect weight is going to probably be somewhere around, you know, 260 to, you know, the late 250s. But man, he dominated at 265. So I don't know how you could argue how he's got to shape up. But, you know, I'm sure once he gets down here with the team and with this strength and conditioning uh, staff, he's going to turn into an absolute force and cannot wait to see what he's going to develop into because you can see the traits, man. With Weaver, what we're getting is a dynamic and powerful edge rusher that just can get it done at a high level. He's had tremendous production at Boise State with 34 sacks over three years in the Mountain West Conference. So, man, I'm sure if he stayed a fourth year, he probably would have gone, you know, somewhere in the second round, maybe late first round. But he decided to come out and, man, he's landed with the right team because we sure are going to nurture his talent because, God, he's got a lot of it. And after bringing in guys like Kyle Van Noy and Shaq Lawson and Emmanuel Ogba, Weaver's going to be able to come in and focus on being a pass rushing specialist while he works on his run stopping game. And what better mentors than those guys to perfect his craft and develop into an all round solid defensive end? This pick is exactly what I wanted the Dolphins to do at some point in the draft, but preferably in the fourth and fifth round, maybe even third round. What I wanted was a young, dynamic rushing threat that. Won't have all the pressure in the world to produce from the get-go. He's going to get some spot reps here and there to pin his ears back and just get after the cornerback like a bat out of hell. And that's going to be the perfect situation for Curtis Weaver to come in, like I said, and do what he does best. And that's get after the quarterback. But hopefully, with uh, those veterans around, he's um, he can learn from those guys and just really learn 
what it means to be an all-round uh, defensive lineman, defensive end, edge rusher, outside linebacker, whatever you want to call him, in the NFL. He's one of my favorite picks in this entire draft class for the Dolphins, and I'm sure a lot of you guys agree. Curtis Weaver, man, cannot wait to see what kind of a role he's going to have in this defense moving forward. Moving on to the sixth round here with our lone pick in round six, uh, 185 overall. We took the long snapper, Blake Ferguson, out of LSU. Another surprising pick. I didn't think we we're going to be drafting a long snapper. I'm sure if you we were going to bring in a long snapper for competition, it's probably going to be you know in undrafted free agency. But obviously, the Finns love what they saw out of Blake Ferguson, out of LSU. When watching the draft coverage and seeing you know his highlights, it looks like he gets the ball out in a hurry. It looks like it's tight. It looks like it's quick. And man, it looks like... We've picked up a good long snapper. He's going to compete with Tabor Pepper. Um, he's probably going to take his job, you know, honestly. But yeah, he's a good uh, long snapper to help out our kicker and punter. And lastly, onto the seventh round here. Originally, we were supposed to have three picks in the seventh round, but we traded both those away. Um, oh, I can't remember at this point who we traded them to, but with the 246th overall pick, we took Malcolm Perry, the tremendously versatile weapon out of Navy. He played wide receiver, running back, and quarterback for Navy the past uh, couple of years, and he's just cr tremendously versatile and explosive at the position. Uh, he ran a 4.63 at the combine, but man, he plays much faster than that. He, he's just tremendously quick and explosive out there on the field and just can get it done from you know whatever position he plays. At this point, Malcolm Perry is probably going to be like a practice squad player, um, you know, for the Dolphins. But, you know, if he impresses in training camp and shows, you know, he can do a number of things to help out the offense at a high level, he might get a chance. And he's going to be a secret weapon for us that we've got in our back pocket to at attack defenses. And that's exactly what you want, man. He isn't quite like a Taysom Hill, but he does bring those kind of qualities, man. He can play receiver. He can play running back. He can even play some quarterback for us because, obviously, he can throw the ball. He can throw the ball much better than a majority of of, you know, NFL wide receivers, because you see that a lot in today's NFL, man. Guys like Mohamed Sanu, um, God, Julian Edelman, just a number of dudes are throwing the ball these days, and Malcolm Perry could get in the mix and show off that versatility, but at this point, I think he's going to be a practice squad player, but let's see what the young dude can do out of Navy moving forward. And with that, that is the end of the Miami Dolphins 2020 NFL draft class, and God, it's been a long time coming, and man, I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with what we've done as a whole. On day three, we've added some players that are going to be able to come in and just, you know, provide depth right away. Guys like Kinley and Strobridge, I'm sure, and Curtis Weaver are going to get playing time right away. I mean, and obviously, Blake Ferguson is going to compete and Malcolm Perry. Who knows what kind of a weapon he can develop into, but these guys have definitely helped to round out a pretty tremendous uh, draft class. And really, the whole team and... And pretty much this whole draft class just depends on how Tua is going to develop as a quarterback, you know, and just how healthy he stays. If he can be a Russell Wilson or a Drew Brees, uh, you know, every player on this team is going to get elevated. But if he struggles and we continue to be a 500 team, these guys are probably just going to end up being traded or cut at the end of their contract. But hopefully, man, this can all come together and we can compete uh, for Super Bowls down the road. So that's it for my day three review of the NFL draft. We've got a number of good guys on both sides of the ball. Guys that are going to do exactly what the scheme requires of them. And the theme of what kind of players Coach Flores loves in his locker room has continued with these day three selections. Number one, they're tough. Number two, they're smart at their craft. And number three, they love the game. And they just love to compete out on the gridiron. And just honestly, play their hearts out for the team. Make sure to like, subscribe. If you enjoyed the video or if you've been uh, enjoying the content lately, I want to hear some feedback from you guys. Let me know what you think about my reviews uh, of these players. Uh, let me know what you think of the picks, uh, who you might have, you know, wanted differently on day three. But as always, it's fins up, baby. The NFL draft has finally come and gone. And now we just got to wait for OTAs in training camp. Who knows when that's going to be at this point? I mean, God, training camp. Could be in like September, October at this point, but God, hopefully football can uh, continue on the usual schedule and the Dolphins can get going because we haven't had a talented team like this in, God, a decade. And this COVID-19 has to hit when we've developed this tremendous team and it's going to obviously uh, affect our ability to, you know, come together and prepare as a team. But yeah, we can only hope for the best. 
Alrighty, cheers guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.